Hi, this is Lisa Tenner, and I am so excited to be sharing with you this video interview of Eric Qualman, who spoke to me about crowdfunding for his latest book, What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. Uh, and I'm also uh, kind of embarrassed at the same time because we had a little technical issue, and uh, Eric was very kind to tape the video for me, but as a result, I am huge, and I'm the one asking the questions, and this wonderful best-selling author with all the exciting information is really, really tiny on the screen, which we didn't realize was going to happen. So I thought this information was just too good not to share with you, but I apologize ahead of time that you will be staring at a giant picture of me and a really tiny picture of Eric. But be that as it may, you're going to want to see this video. It's great information on crowdfunding and on all these great tips that Eric used in crowdfunding his book and why he chose to do that. So without further ado, my interview with Eric Qualman. Hi, this is Lisa Tanner, your book coach. And I'm really excited today to be talking to Eric Qualman, who is the author of this wonderful book, What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. And I actually met Eric because I contributed to his crowdfunding campaign. And I was kind of surprised at the level that I contributed. Uh, and I, I think it shows the incredible power of crowdfunding and the creativity that can come with it. So for those of you who are kind of new to crowdfunding, why don't I have Eric actually explain a little about what crowdfunding is. So crowdfunding is reaching out to fans and also people that you don't know that say, look, I'm doing this project and I want to get it out to the world and I need some money in order to do that and your support. If it's not just your money, just your support. Help me get this out to the world. So there's so many famous examples of that, like the, the Pebble watch is a smart watch. So think about your phone that's on your wrist. And so this guy in Canada goes, I've got this idea, but I need some money. I need about $100,000 to make it happen. And if you help me make it happen, you can get one of the first watches like this ever made. Uh, so that's a good example of, of how it's utilized. That's what's called crowdfunding. Um, instead of going to a bank, it's really going to peers to go, I need your support, monetary, or just your support as a fan to get this project up and running. Great. And so I want to take a step back for a minute and say, you know, you're a, a best-selling author. What made you decide to self-publish what happens in Vegas Days on YouTube? rather than traditionally publish it, and then we can talk about crowdfunding. Yeah, so I've uh, published two other books, Socialnomics and Digital Leader, one's with Wiley and one's with McGraw-Hill. For those of you who know, those are two of the, the largest publishers in the world, so they've been fantastic. Uh, for this third version, I did want to go out and test stuff, because what I write about a lot of times is what's new, digital trends, and the best way I learn about it is actually doing. So seeing that this crowdsourcing fund is only increasing, um, I wanted to kind of test it out myself and so that was the impetus behind doing that going to crowdfunding also too when I call it like a hybrid approach artisanal approach uh, of publishing because now we can pick the best of the best of everyone out there we, we have more control to do that so if I want to go to Kindle Direct Publishing which is Amazon's version of the Kindle they have a lot of different benefits you can utilize if you're in their program for example I can run a book for free for two days to high school students. And we just did that. So we got 6,000 downloads. So it gives us a little more control with this type of book, which we think is really good for the younger generation. And also, it's really for everybody. Everybody has a reputation. But allows us to help. <laughs> right. And so it's kind of like allows us to help people that actually need the help that might not have the money. It gives us as much flexibility as possible. And to me, it's like a, the software world. You always want to use best of breed. So it allows us to pick and choose the distribution partners that we want to use for the book, and it gives us flexibility to do stuff, like I mentioned, if we want to offer it for free to Kansas University or to a nonprofit, then we have the ability to do that. That's very, very exciting. And, um, and why, why did you choose Kickstarter over other sites? I, we close Kickstarter. There's like Indiegogo. There's other versions of crowdfunding. Kickstarter because it's the mothership, you know, it's the big one that everybody knows. So I wanted to, one, try the thing that most people have been using and talking about, and two, I knew it had the most scale. Um, and so that's why we selected Kickstarter. 
And you've talked about some of the benefits of crowdfunding. I think a, a big one really is that you're getting all these people on board who might not have even known about your books or who, who suddenly have an investment in it. They're really excited. They want to see this thing come out. They want to support it. Can you talk a little more about that and how that, um, how that played out when you, when you published? Yeah, I mean, a lot of first-time authors, or even if you're an experienced author, is that one good thing is it's going to tell you if your idea is good or not as well. And so sometimes that can be nerve-wracking. You go, well, I'm going to put this out there, and if no one supports it, then what it can tell you is, hey, go to the next project. Or it might be, okay, I've got five readers. I knew that. This is very niche, but I'm so passionate about it, I'm still going to do it. So it, it kind of allows you to see also firsthand, am I just crazy? Or do other people think this is also a good idea? So that's another reason why we did it. Because you never know, do people really want this in a book form? Do they need this material? Um, and it turned out they did. And so, and I'm happy to talk, if you want, just at the, the, the whole process of going to Kickstarter and what we learned. Yeah, that would be great. That would be terrific. So a couple of things. So here we are, ground zero. We go to Kickstarter. First of all, you want to look out who's been successful, who hasn't been successful. So we see... Seth Godin, very successful with his Kickstarter project. But part of that's because he's Seth Godin. He's got a name already. He's got a, a fan base. Uh, but you can learn some stuff from him. Um, and so what I liked about what he did is he, he tried to keep some things simplified. And so he had a no-brainer option. So basically, I replicated that no-brainer option. I go, that's great. Get people. They're busy. Here's the no-brainer. If you're not going to do anything, here's the no-brainer. Because what I found is I started to look at a lot of Kickstarter projects, and they have... 10 options. So at first I go, whoa, that's too many, because I'm a big simplest guy. Uh, but then I started looking at the ones that were successful, and most of them did have multiple options. And so I go, okay, well, let's not have 10, let's have 8 or 7, but let's start to figure out what that looks like. But let's have the no-brainer option. Turned out that was a great idea. That's whatever. That's the most selected one. Um, and it was also a good idea to have it packaged. So the no-brainer was get four books. So it's like if you're going to take the time to invest, like invest at a higher level with four and get a much greater discount. And also in the back of our minds, we're thinking, we got to ship all these things. So it's still the same effort for us to ship it, whether it's one book versus ten. So let's get packages so that they're getting more than one book. Also, we knew the book lend itself to be one that you hand out to employees, to also to uh, students, to your kids. And so that's why you need kind of to buy more than one. So that was something that we learned from looking out there, and it turned out that that was a good thing to do. The one thing that was a big surprise to us is that I put a couple bigger ticket items, like over $1,000 ticket items, over $500, um, and those all sold out. So learning there was that we probably could have maybe put a couple more there. Uh, we wanted to make it sort of exclusive, plus some of these were dinner with me, so I didn't know... And we were going to fly people in to Boston. Um, and so that it, we were, if we had to do it again, we probably would have done a little bit more of the bigger ticket items. Um, and that was another thing that we learned is that, oh, yeah, people, if we're able to give them something really of value, sometimes it's access, sometimes it's just insights, then, then that was a learning for us to maybe have a couple more big ticket items. Uh, one thing that didn't go well, which we kind of knew going in, we go, I don't know if this is going to take off, but... And I can't remember the price point. I think it might have been $5 or maybe it was a dollar to where you could send a, I think it might have been a dollar, send a postcard to a friend that says, hey, I was thinking about you for this book and, and here I'm just thinking about your reputation. So we were going to send a postcard, which to be honest, it's probably good it didn't take off because that would have been logistically really tough to send out all these handwritten postcards. Uh, but it turns out that didn't resonate. But we kind of wanted to test it. But our hypothesis was that might not work and it turned out to be true. Great. So, um, any specific tip for someone wanting to do their own crowdfunding campaign, specific things that you would say, make sure you do this? Yep. So if you use Kickstarter, one thing is they don't want business books. They don't want business. They want arts and entertainment. So my first submission didn't go through. And then I because I said this is a business piece, and I looked at it and then rewrote it and actually sent a note to them. I found out a contact there and said, hey, I agree the way that it was written, that's, but I wrote it poorly. It's really about individuals and their reputation. So it's really uh -huh. about, they also don't want self-help books. So you got to be very careful. So I had to rewrite it so that it was in their guidelines. 
Um, so that's a big tip. That was a big learning for me. No business books they don't want, and they don't want self-help. So you need to figure out where you fall in that line and how to work within it. So that's what we're able to do with that book is work within it. So that's a huge tip that I give to everybody out there. The other thing, too, is uh, keep that time window. I like to keep it short. You can set up how long the Kickstarter campaign runs for, um, but I like to kind of hyper-focus, get people's attention, and just say, you've got to do it today. Uh, so we kept our window under 30 days, which is a little shorter, but it, it worked out well for us. Um, there was one stat I read, something like, you've got to get to at least 40% within the first two days to have a chance. Like, it's that big push out the window. Um, our price point, we decided it's better to make sure we hit the goal. So we set a price point at 3600 So we had to get 3600 for it to be successful. Um, as a fail-safe, and this is kind of full disclosure, we didn't have to use this fail-safe. But one of the reasons we put in some of the higher price points was we thought, well, couldn't you have your – you're going to lose money because Kickstarter takes 20% of everything that's given. But if you weren't going to hit your goal, could you have your cousin buy the dinner? And so that's like an $1,800 dinner, so it gets you close or over the top if right. you needed to. Because what you don't want to do is go out there and have it fall flat, at least for us. We wanted to make right. sure that we were successful. So we put a, a lower bar than we thought maybe we could hit, 3600 We thought we'd be happy as heck to get 5000 So we put it at 3600 And then the reason it's 360 is because the roulette well, wheel has 36 numbers. And in uh -huh. the book, we talk about... The Vegas book, What Happens to Vegas Days on YouTube, <laughs> is that you're playing Russian roulette with your reputation if you don't understand these new rules of reputation. And so that's why we picked $3,600. Um, but then all of a sudden we raised over 11000 So we were amazed at just the outpouring. The other tip that I would give to people is you've got to produce a nice video. And that doesn't mean you have to be a video expert. You can go shoot it. Make sure the background's cool and big. So, like, behind me is the city of Boston. We went up to the roof here and shot it so that it's like, whoa. Like, they're in, like, a big space. Whatever that background is, you know in your mind where locally that's going to make you look big. Um, and so I do that. Shoot the video. Keep it short. Like, try to keep it under two minutes. And if, if you can, make sure you have the cover design in there. So they want to see visually, this is what I'm going to get. Okay, got it. This is what I'm going to get a tangible. When I fund this, I'm going to get four copies of this cover. Um, you'll probably notice from our Kickstarter campaign, we actually adjusted the cover after Kickstarter. But uh -huh. make sure you're, you're at least 90% along the lines to what your book's going to look like. Uh-huh. Great. Well, those are, those are really great tips. I appreciate it because crowdfunding is, I think, such a powerful way to fund the project, but also really have people, it's a momentum when the, when the book gets published, so I, I've been encouraging people to do that, and uh, I always want to just say a few quick words about what happens to this big estate on YouTube, because it is such a powerful book, and I hope everybody watching this video goes out and buys the book, because it's so, so, so crucial to know what your reputation is, and to manage it, or it will manage you. Um, and I think there are a lot of good people making mistakes out there, so, so don't be one of them. Uh, but the other thing is, I, I read this book twice, and the first time uh, there were quite a few things I realized, oh, yeah, I should be doing that, and, and it, it helped me. But the second time I thought, okay, I've got to give this book to my 13-year-old. So it, it's important our kids are managing their reputation as well. So thank you, Eric, for writing this great book and for spending some time with us to discuss crowdfunding. No, thank you so much, and to your point, it's one of the reasons we wrote the book is that when I was out giving speeches to universities and the high schools, that I understood they just weren't getting it. They weren't understanding we live in a fully transparent world. I mean, adults don't get it, but it's especially important for the younger generation because they're in a different time to where they haven't learned a lot of integrity and reputational pieces, just the basics. And so I'm glad, especially someone like you that's an expert at reading and also writing uh, in the whole publishing world. So that means a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. No, thank you.